All right, guys, uh, back again with uh, Proxmox. Um, they released version 2.0, and I was very excited. And I'm filming this like 12 hours after they released it, which is kind of cool. So I thought I would give you guys a little bit of showing of what's going on. So right now it's in my server down there. Not a very special server. It's just an old my old PC. I guess. Oh, 8 gigs of RAM, dual core processor, so nothing too special, but it runs my server. And right now we have a Proxmox CD that we downloaded and burned, and now we're going through the install. Right now we've just accepted the license agreement. Now I have to say the target hard disk that we want to install it on, so um, right now I'm using my wireless keyboard. I have to use that to boot it, but you know, after that, it's nice. Um, and my mouse. Essentially, the target hard disk that we want to install this on, if you can even see it, which probably can't. I have a 931 gigabyte or you know one terabyte drive that all my VMs are stored on, and then I have an 80 gigabyte drive right now um, that my, and I have a 500 gig that is a pass through to one of my virtual machines. It's not plugged in right now, um, so we're going to choose the 74 gigabyte one, and then we're going to hit next. And I did back up all my virtual machines before I started doing this, so. Um, then there's just the usual time zone stuff, and let's look for the great city of Detroit. That was a joke, it's not a great city. Next, then we're just gonna go through the password and email setup, and I'll be right back. And after entering that, we're at the network configuration page. Um, we're just gonna go set up a network. Um, right now it's pulling in a 192 address, which it might have pulled in off of uh, one of my NIC cards. I'm not sure exactly where it's getting at. Uh, because it's going to be in the 10 dot IP. I have, um, in the back here, I have, let me see if I find these here. What the hell? <laughs> there it is. I have one NIC here, or one network, or yeah, network cord into my NIC here, and then two in the bottom. So, uh, can't really see it, but. So I have a total of three, three NICs in my machine, so, but we're gonna set this to the 10.IP address, and then we'll go on from there. Cause that's the, my internal network, and that's what's gonna be where Proxmox is at. All right, after setting the IP, um, it does its whole install sequence, and then you just reboot, and you're supposed to point to the selected IP address, which would be 10.10.10.150 in my case, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Alright, now we're uh, back at the web interface. Um, you just, I don't know does that. You just go ahead and hit the IP address, and it should go directly to it, and uh, since mine was, I was coming from my DMZ into my internal network, I had to open up port uh, 8006. I gotta see if there's a way to force it to 443 all the way through, but if you go to 443, it redirects to 8006, so I just gotta make sure that port is open um, to access it. You just log in with your user credentials. And as you can see, I've already logged on and uh, done a few things, but uh, essentially come to this data center thing, and uh, by default it has some storage, um, but uh, Let's go ahead and take local storage is what has uh, what um, is there by default and it contains images, ISO, containers, and templates. Um, right then, it had just uh, taken the my main drive that I installed on the 80 gigabyte drive and had uh, separated it up so that there was um, I think it was like 60 gigs of space on there. So what I went ahead and did uh, was I actually deleted the entire PVE. Uh, so I had to create, uh, delete the LVM um, that was already there. Uh, there's a way to extend it. Um, you'll have to look in the forums. But uh, I did not know how to do that, so I deleted it and recreated it with my one terabyte, most of my one terabyte hard drive um, added in. So that uh, gives me a little bit more space. Um, and the nice thing about this is that it shows your usage, so you can see it go up and down. Kind of nice. You can look. Ooh, you can look over the year. Wow, that 
for anything. Um, there you go. And you can see where I added that and the space went up. So it's very nice. The reporting in here is quite nice. Um, you can look at the content. Right now there's just one hard disk on there um, for my Windows XP machine. And one of the new things they added was permissions in this, uh, this new version. So it's very nice. But um, and then I added um, backups, a backups directory, and that's my 500 gigabyte uh, hard drive that I have in there. And that's just a regular mounted directory, it's nothing fancy since I just have the backups in there. But essentially what I had to do for that, if we look at mount, um, I device SB or SDB1 is on mount media and that's where my backups are at. And I, that's my PVE. Um, LVAL uh, 0 that I recreated with the rest of the my 1 terabyte hard drive on it. So so if we go to Mount Media, you notice there's all of my backups right there. And there's also a CD, if we go to CD backups, that is what, what's mounted on here. You notice it's a directory let's go here if we go to storage I don't like the way they have all this um, information kind of separated all through you got to figure out which view it's labeled once I get used to it I'm sure it'll be better but if you go to backups it's mount media backups and um, notice right there I can choose since it's a directory I can choose whatever I want um, you can also add directory LVM, NFS share, iSCSI target. So, <clears throat> but uh, Mount Media Backup. So if we go into backups and list that out, there's a folder called dump. And what you don't realize is dump is actually if you were to upload something. As far as I can tell, if you were to upload it, it goes into dump, and it doesn't show up in here until. It, uh, it's in the folder dump. So that's where I put this right here in the folder dump and then I could hit restore. You can't restore this from the command line as far as I can tell. So um, so I had to, essentially we're gonna go ahead and try this. Um, make sure it wasn't a fluke. <laughs> so we're gonna move uh, vz dump open vz 101.tgz and we're gonna move it to backups dump and then let's go into backups and dump and you'll notice there open VZ right there so if we go into backups it's gonna refresh and there you are it's now you're now able to restore it so that took me a little bit to figure out so the restore command uh, should take shouldn't take too long um, and I'm gonna restore it to 101 since that's the one I had before and we're gonna go ahead and hit, hit restore Mm, can't lock container 101. So, as I unfortunately found out, if you can't restore that, uh, the problem is actually with my PVE. Um, the logical problem that I showed you, um, it was down, down. Yeah, PVE data I showed you was like PVLVAL 0. Well, that doesn't work. Um, it's going to error out, and that was causing my error. So I had to um, list the volumes, and um, it was that was data instead of data that was there. And there's a way you can rename the logical volume, and uh, I went ahead and renamed it, and works fine now after I rebooted. So that's good. I managed to restore 101. Um, just did the exact same thing I did before, and it restored just fine. Um, <clears throat> and then I started up, and I can now console into it so um, there you go so <clears throat> it works just fine um, and I'm able to hit my web page and all that so so that's the good part about that so now I have uh, and you'll notice the nice little icons here that shows us an open VZ container and then that shows us the KVM guest so so now that we've covered a lot of the uh, transferring from 1.9 to 2.0 in Proxmox, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the new features um, and just look a little bit at the entire environment and how things are laid out. So 
I do kind of like, sort of kind of like the way this is set up. Um, the data center is the top and it shows it for, it uh, is the top level for everything, it shows everything underneath it. Um, but for the storage, I can only see the path target from data center. I can't really see it from, uh, if you go to like backups, it doesn't show it here, which I kind of wish it would. I wish you could just click on it and see where it's mounted to in the file system. So, um, well, um, these graphs are very nice though. I, I love the way the graphs are set up. <clears throat> a lot of useful information on them. So, um, but if you go to the data center, there's a search, and you can search through all of your pools or storage. That's obviously for large installations, which mine is not. Um, you can look at the summary. Um, a lot of the nodes is in there in high availability, which we're not going to use. Um, options, nothing to advanced there storage obviously backup and a lot of this is a lot of this stuff is a lot like 1.9 um, for backup you can add a lot of things um, and you can select which ones to back up uh, that's pretty much 1.9 stuff all right then for users this is new as far as I know you can go ahead and set up uh, different users put them in groups and give them permissions um, you can do permissions by pool, which is kind of nice. So uh, that's definitely a lot of the new focus on Proxmox is about roles and authentication and stuff like that. So, and this is pretty nice, but uh, definitely not something I'm going to be. Oh, you can add different authentication types. Oh, yep, you can add LDAP server, Active Directory server. So it's very nice. And then high availability, which is not enabled right now. So that's pretty much the data center view. Then you can go to individual nodes and you can see what's on the node currently, uh, which is kind of nice. You can take a look at each um, and see now this is where it really becomes useful. You can see CPU usage and then uh, server load. Hmm. Very nice. Network traffic. I think there was. Uh, hmm. I thought there was one for disk I/O, but maybe you have to do that. Maybe that's per. No, hmm. I thought there was one for disk I/O, but oh, here it is. It's on per virtual machine. Okay, and that's a very nice one. Um, I had a backup server running once on here, and the disk I/O went through the roof and slowed down every single other virtual machine. So I had to get rid of that virtual machine, but. All right, essentially that's that. And then um, if you're looking at the, the node, you can look at the services. Obviously, um, a lot of this stuff I'm not even gonna use uh, since I don't even have, technically have a uh, another Proxmox node. So uh, network is kind of nice to look at. As you can see, I have three NICs active. Um, right now this is I'm accessing Proxmox, and then these are for two virtual machines. Um, one of them go is in the 10 10 10 network, and one is in the 192.168. This is in the 192.168 network, I believe. Um, yep, yeah, um, should be. And then this is the, I believe this is in the 10.10 10 network. So, which actually shouldn't be. A, I should move this because I don't. This is a Windows machine. I don't really want it in my 10 network. Um, all right. Um, DNS, pretty simple. Time, very simple. Syslog just shows what's going on in your system. So task history, which is nice. And a lot of this is kind of looking a little bit more like uh, VMware, um, which is fine. So I like VMware setup, even though I don't like how they handle certain things. But then you can go to each virtual machine. A lot of it's the same. Um, UBC is a new feature, at least in the web UI, and it stands for User Bean Counter. It's part of OpenVZ, and it's for resource management. Um, so you can go ahead and limit a lot of resources if you uh, don't want the virtual machine grabbing up too much so um, so it's uh, gonna be nice if I ever get into the detailed part of it I can take a look at the init log 
and it should not be looking for deluge D. Anyway, sorry, I'm getting caught up in this. I was going to say this is a nice, uh, <laughs> you can look at backups and you can backup now, um, which is nice. I like the backup now feature. That's definitely a lot better. And then you can look at permissions. You can add a user and say no access, which I'm not going to do. <laughs> um, and that's the OpenVZ container. And then we look at the uh, KVM container. Right now this one is stopped. So, but uh, take a look at the hardware, um, hard disk network, and you, you can edit all of these. So, and this is in bridge mode. You can change to NAT mode if you wanted to. <clears throat> um, nothing too extremely amazing here. So the monitor is kind of nice. Again, the backup you can backup now and permissions. And of course you have your hard disk drives and all that. So and pools are nice. You can take a look at the pool and members. You can see what's in there. So you, that's usually how you give permissions, or you can click on pools and have access to maybe a certain. Um, sub aspect of all of your stuff so another thing I like about this is you know the screen is white that happens after you start the machine if it's down it's black um, I don't know if this changes or not but I'm not gonna try it because it's running <laughs> um, and then you can go ahead and console right in which is nice and, uh, and this hasn't changed from uh, 1.9 so but uh, it has added a new um, GUI up here, so. <clears throat> but nothing too too fancy. So they do say it has VNC support, uh, remotely SSL support, so that's nothing to look at. But and that is essentially um, the basic overview of. Oh, yeah. Then that's if you had, you could migrate it if you had more. No, it's that's a basic overview of 2.0 yeah, Proxmox.